In this experiment, the same sample has been measured multiple times. And the idea is by mu measuring multiple times, we can see the data evolve as the X-rays and the measurement process causes a reduction of copper 2 plus oxide. And in order to monitor how these changes occur, we're going to look at the copper 2P doublet and also the copper OJ and oxygen 1S peaks. And these two sets of measurements that were copied into a separate file are now combined into an irregular set of spectra and we can look at these using PCA to work out how many different shapes we ought to see here and just on a, a, a quick inspection you can see that two would be sufficient three would be more than sufficient so we'll reproduce using three and ultimately we will have now got, obtained a set of spectra that are noise reduced and we can use this noise reduced set of data using the vector technique to work out different spectra and therefore work out component shapes that underlie this sequence of measurements. So the first thing we need to do is after we've created the different spectra is to move through these data and examine these different spectra and observe what changes might occur. Now in, this is a particularly interesting one because you can see there's almost no change occurring in these satellite structures and any change is occurring only in the th one halves and three halves primary peaks. So we need to now have a quick look and see at the what the OJ is looking like. And the OJ and the oxygen 1S looks like respectable spectra. So we'll take that as an example of what might be beneath here. This is not, not a definitive answer. This is a way of inferring what might be there. So the next step is to say if we've taken something which we believe to be closer to the copper 2 plus state, the one that we're now looking for is something that will look like a copper 1 plus state, as we believe this is, this is potentially what is being generated as we do this measurement. And we're going to look at this by considering the copper 2P and also if we select a copper 2P, how does the oxygen 1S and the OJ look? Uh, and this, this gives us an idea of whether we are choosing wisely the types of peaks from the copper 2P. So looking back at the oxygen 1S, and you can see there's a negative going peak here. So we'll, we'll adjust this a bit more to try and get it to look more like an oxygen 1S. And, and that looks close. So let's save that one. So we've now got two spectra representing two different materials that when combined give us the material that we were we've obtained we've uh, been measuring using the XVS so that's what the oxygen looks like and that's got a shift of about 0.2 and if we look at the oxy the copper 2p you can see there's a shift of about about 2.2, uh, 1.2 rather, and th and so they, these are significant shifts in the, in the copper 2P, and much bigger than the oxygen 1S. So this suggests that we really do have line shapes that are giving us some further information about the oxidation state of these materials. And what we'll do just to assess this is to create a decomposition of the entire data set using the two component shapes that we've calculated. So as we now examine these, just turn off the normalization and let's see what they look like. The red and the green are the two calculated line shapes and as we adjust them you can see that they are reproducing quite nicely the data set as a whole. So we now need to do a little bit more investigation of what these two shapes might actually mean.